What's up everyone, happy Monday, and welcome to week two. Today is uh, day one of week two, we're gonna go back to another push workout. Hopefully you enjoyed the weekend, got some time to rest and recover, and are ready to go again. Make sure you get your warm up in before we get started. You don't have to necessarily do that exact warm up that I posted, especially depending on the workout. So if you're doing a push or pull workout, we know it's gonna be mostly upper body, maybe do a couple more upper body warm up exercises, you can kind of choose what you want to do. So today's workout is going to be split up into three different parts. The first part here will be kind of a combination between a unilateral, which is like a one arm movement, and a stability movement as well. So the timing is going to be 30 seconds on, 20 seconds off, four total sets. We'll take a 30 second break after that and move on to the next group. There's only three exercises here, and we have a longer break than usual. So this is taking into consideration that you're going either moderate to relatively heavy with this. So if you only have light weights and you can't go too heavy, bring the rest times down and bring the active times up. So the first exercise we're going to do here is an overhead press. I'm going to show you a way to make it easy or harder depending on the weights you have. If you have light or moderate weights, you're going to do a strict press. So what you're going to do with that one unilateral movement is pull overhead and then the other arm is going to simultaneously press. If you want to make it easier, if you have really heavy weights, dip and press. Turn it into like a push press. That way your legs can kind of help you out and generate a little bit more momentum. But you do want to try to keep that one arm overhead the whole time. You'll do that for 30 seconds. You'll take a 20 second break. So nice long break because you are working both arms here, even though the one exercise where the one arm is doing the movement. Next exercise, exact same thing switch and press. So to make it harder, keep it strict with no bent knees. To make it easier, you can dip from the knees and press overhead. If you have to, you can drop down to one weight, but really try to use both weights for this one. Same idea for number two, which is going to be a chest press. We did this one last week as well. You're going to be on your back. One arm stays pressed up. The other arm is going to wrap it out. Try to keep that arm that's extended, fully extended the whole time. So you don't want to bend from the elbow, you want it locked out. The other elbow should go all the way down and touch the ground. Switch arms, you do that for four total sets, so two rounds. And then the last exercise here will be a chest fly. This one you're going to require a little bit of core stability as well. So slight bend of that arm, bring it out, and then back up and try to touch that weight together. If you have relatively heavy weights and you can't do the chest fly, do more of a neutral grip, wider elbow, press up. Really try to get the outside part of the pack there. So we'll do that for four total sets each, then we'll take a break and we'll move on to the second part. With the first part here, 30 on, 20 off, four sets each, 30 second break, and we'll get into it. So we're going to start first with that overhead press. Okay, so if you can, both dumbbells here. We're going to start in three, two, one. Let's go. So remember, the harder variation would be to keep it strict. And you want to try to bring that other arm all the way down so it almost touches your shoulder, and then drive off. The extended arm, you want that elbow nice and close to your ear. You've got just over 10 seconds to go. Breathing out as you press. Breathe it on the way down. Try not to overarch that back. Three, two, one. All right, so nice long break here. Remember, if you're going light and you want to keep going, feel free to keep going. Make sure when you're extending that arm that you're not arching your back. So tucking those hips in, engage your core, go from there. So we're doing the exact same thing by switching arms here. In three, two, one. So one arm stays overhead, the other arm you're going to press. So this is good for isolating each individual arm, but also by creating good stability in that arm that stays overhead. Remember to watch that breathing, so you're breathing out as you press up. Breathe in on the way down. Try to reach that dumbbell up as high as you can towards the ceiling. Three, two, one. And then we're going to go back to that first side again, one more time each. Second time through, you're going to start to get that lactic acid building up. You're going to start to feel the shoulders burn more and more, especially if you're using 
moderate to heavy weights here. Okay, so same thing, back to that original side. In three, two, one, go press and drop. Nice and controlled here. So these movements, you don't want to go too fast. It's not explosive, it's not cardio. Really training for strength, stability, muscular endurance here. So much different approach than a cardio workout. 10 seconds to go. Remember to stand up nice and tall here. Three, two, one. Take 20 seconds. Last set, you're going to switch to that other side. Remember, if you're getting tired here, you want to use that little bit of a uh, bent knee. For a push press, you can do that to make it a little bit easier for yourself as well. Okay, last one. Three, two, one. Let's go. So a good cue here is just to bring that shoulder, or bring that dumbbell, to tap your shoulder, just so you know that you're going all the way down. Getting that full range of motion here, about halfway. You want to feel this one almost exclusively in the shoulders, a little bit in the core, but definitely not like an ab burn or anything like that. Three, two, one, and break. So we're going to take 30 seconds. We're going to do the exact same thing with a different exercise. So here we're going to do the chest press. On your back, one arm stays extended, the other arm is going to bend and extend. And as you figured out last week, the push movements, shoulders, chest, triceps. You're going to feel a lot of shoulders with this workout. That's going to be the case every week that we do this one. So let's get in position. Three, two, one. One arm stays over the chest, the other arm touches the ground. This one should actually be a little bit easier than the overhead press, which is why I did the overhead press first when you had a little bit more energy. But same rules apply. One arm is extended, the other arm is doing the best. This also helps with your overall core stability and works some of those smaller stabilizer muscles that you're not going to do for two arms. Three, two, one. So we're going to do the same thing, switch sides. Make sure you get that elbow to touch the ground every rep. That's when you know you get that full range of motion. And when you bring a chest press, you always want a natural arch in the back. You don't want to overextend it, but you don't want your back flat either. Okay, three, two, one. So one arm stays extended. The other arm is going to wrap it in. If this one hurts your shoulder, so do the back shoulder. Like I said last week, you can adjust the angle of the dumbbell. So if the palm forward hurts, try more of a neutral grip, meaning the palms are facing each other, or even somewhere in between, like a diagonal. Almost there. Three, two, one. All right, so we're gonna go back to that first set again. One more time each. The breathing here, with any pushing movement, breathing out as you press, breathe in on the way down. You can really get a good rhythm here, so try to follow those general rules. Okay, three, two, one. Let's go, round two. Nice and slow on the way down. It's okay if you press up a little bit faster, but you do want to go slow and controlled on the way down. Remember, if you're, if you're using really light weights and this is too easy for you, take a, a shorter break and a longer active time, working on more of that muscle endurance, and slow down your reps. Three, two, one. Last one here, switching arms. Because ideally, by the end of each set, you should feel that burn, mostly in the shoulders, but a little bit of your chest as well. So one more set here, we'll take a break and then we'll move on to that third exercise, which is the chest fly. In three, two, one, so switch arms. Let's go, usually by that fourth set, that's when you're gonna to start to really feel it. Even though you're only repping up with one arm, you're still using both sides for each set. Halfway. Got about 10 seconds to go, and then we'll take a 30 second break. Three, two, one, 
and we're able to stay 30 seconds. So the last one here is going to be the chest fly. One arm goes out and then tap. Nice and slow, keep it controlled. If you have lighter dumbbells, you might have to use lighter weights for this one, especially if you're going heavy for the chest press. If you can't do it at all, just make it more of a neutral grip chest press rather than a fly, but flaring that elbow out just a little bit. Nice and slow too, watch that core stability. You don't want it pulling you away. Three, two, one. So just the one side. As usual, the one arm stays locked out. And as that weight travels away from your body, you're going to feel it wanting to pull your body away. So you're going to have to use your core to dig in. Dig in with the feet as well to help create a little more stability. You've got 10 seconds to go. Three, two, one. Take 20 seconds, same thing on the other side. I think I might have touched on this last week as well. So the chest press is generally more of a strength-based exercise, whereas the chest fly is more for actually building muscle and sculpting out that pec. They both serve their own unique benefits. Okay, three, two, one. So slight bend in the elbow, and the lighter your weights are, the less of a bend you have to do, the heavier your weight is, you can't really control it, Bend that elbow more to make it a little bit easier. Because the exercise gets harder as that weight travels farther away from your body. 10 seconds. This one you should feel it in the chest, also in the shoulders. Three, two, one. All right. Two down, two to go. So same thing back to that first set again. One more of each, then we'll take a break and I'll explain the next part of the workout which will be a little bit faster paced, but still, same idea. It's not like a cardio workout here. You don't want to chase intensity every single workout. Three, two, one, let's go. So control down, drive up. If you want to make it a little bit, a little bit more effective as well, try to press those weights together and squeeze your pecs. So squeeze those chest muscles together as the weights come up and meet each other. Slow on the way down. You can come up a little bit faster if you like, but it's all about controlling the descent. Three, two, one. Last set here, chest fly. Then we'll take a bit of a longer break. So let me know again if you guys are working out. Just to keep you accountable, let me know how the workout was. What you like, if you didn't like suggestions, requests, concerns, anything. Okay, three. Two, one, last one here. Let's go. Nice and controlled. Feet are planted here. Don't make the mistake of lifting your feet off the ground when you're doing chest press or chest fly. You do want a little bit of a natural arch in your back. And by placing the feet up and engaging your abs, you don't allow the shoulder blade to travel in the range of motion that it shouldn't be doing. Three, two, one. All right, rest up. Grab some water if you need it. The next part we have five different exercises. Timing is going to be 25 seconds on, 15 seconds off. We're going to do two sets in a row, then we'll move on to the next one. So first we're going to start off, for most of you, one weight is all you need. If you're going really light, you may need to use two. So you're going to get to a seated position. Grab the weight with both ends here. If you can, feet off the ground and press. So not only are we working with chest and shoulders here, but by lifting the feet off the ground, you're going to engage your core. If you want to make it even harder, or if you have a lighter weight, you just want to use one dumbbell, seated press, like that. It's going to really test your core, it's going to really test that one arm. So you can choose one or two sides. The second exercise will be a tricep kickback. There's two ways you can do this, or three ways technically. You can do this from a hip hinge position, only if you're comfortable hip hinging. Extend and flex. So 95% of the movement here comes from the elbows. You'll get a little shoulder movement, a little bit from the hips, but really want most of it coming from the elbows. You can also do that with one arm. Flex and extend. And if you're not comfortable with that at all, the easiest way to do this is to drop down on all fours, Lift up that one wing and extend. This exercise 
It's one of the best exercises to build those triceps. So if you're lucky enough to have like a wide set of dumbbells here, go relatively light here and just focus on getting that contraction. Third exercise, no dumbbells needed, we're gonna do body weight dips. So hands on the ground, sit down like this, Get into a hip width position. From here, since we're doing push, the most important thing is you get a good bend in the elbows as you drop the hips. And then as you drive up, extend the elbows. If you want to extend the hips at the same time, that's fine. But the goal here is to get those elbows flexed and extended, keeping your shoulders down and back. I find it's a little easier on your shoulders if you angle your fingers out rather than going in or back, but ultimately that's your call. The next one, you're going to need one dumbbell for a kneeling overhead tricep extension. We did this exercise last time in a standing position. This time, on both knees, flex and extend. You can also grab both ends, flex and extend. And then the last exercise here is a reverse plank. So the reverse plank, you're going to get on your elbows here, straight legs, and lift up. And you're going to hold that position. Make sure your hips aren't dropping. Sit back with the heels. If that's too hard, you can drop down your calves so that it's only your hips and upper back as well. You're gonna feel that one in your triceps and the back part of your shoulders as well. So we're gonna do each one of those two times. 25 on, 15 off, 30 second break after each exercise. Once we've done this, we have a push-up finisher. So we'll get started in 30 seconds. Press. Start off using the one dumbbell. Try lifting your feet off the ground as you simultaneously press. But if you can't do that with your feet up, it's okay if you go feet down. Okay, let's get started in three, two, one. Let's go. So the seated press got lots going on here. Got shoulders, chest, triceps, abs, but also mid and upper back. Those muscles that kind of surround your mid and upper spine. 10 seconds. Try to keep that chest up, back nice and straight. Three, two, one. All right, just take 15 seconds. Same thing one more time. Remember, if you want to make this one harder, if you found that easier, if you want to make it harder, you just use the one dumbbell pressing instead of two hands. Three, two, one, set two. Let's go. So this one's almost like a full body movement because of how many muscles we're engaging. So take your time with it. We got about 10 seconds to go. You're gonna feel those abs and hip flexors a little bit too, so that's totally normal. Make sure you keep your chest up. Three, two, one. Next we're gonna do those tricep kickbacks. So unless you have really light dumbbells, you might need to modify and do single arm here, whether it's standing or on the ground. I'll show you all three variations as we go, but make sure you're not going up too high. So if you are going to be on your uh, standing position here, get down low, flex from there. One or two weights, your call. I'll show you the hard variation first. Ready? Three, two, one. Flex and extend. Flex. And extend, getting that good squeeze. If you want to drop down to one dumbbell, but still standing, it's like you're doing a row, except you keep the elbow up and then extend. So you're not pulling up. Think about bringing that dumbbell back towards the wall. If you want to make it the easiest variation here, drop down to your knees. Three, two, one. Same thing, other side. So the reason this exercise is so hard is because you're using only the triceps here, not the chest or shoulders, which are smaller muscles than your chest and shoulders, making it difficult. Three, two, one, so elbow up, extend. For those of you who are going light or just want more of a challenge here, hinge and extend. One of my favorite exercises for uh, working those triceps as long as you get a really good squeeze at the end there, allow those elbows to do the work. Three, two, one. All right, so next we're gonna do some body weight dips. The most common mistake I see with these dips is allowing your hips and shoulders to do all the work rather than your elbows. 
So you don't want to, you don't want to look like this. See how my elbows stay back the whole time? Instead, flex, extend, flex, and extend. If you have like a step or a chair, even better, you don't need one. Three, two, one. And if you were to use a step or a chair, it would be your hands that are placed on the elevated surface, your feet would be on the ground. So bend those elbows and then extend. You know you're doing this one right if you feel it in the triceps. You should really feel it in, those back, in the back of the arms, especially after the kickbacks. Make sure you get a good squeeze, flex, and extend. Three, two, one. Take 15 seconds. Triceps should be on fire by now. We're gonna do the same thing one more time, and then we're gonna get into a kneeling overhead tricep extension. Okay, three, two, one. Let's go. Flex and extend. Think about as you drop down, bringing your butt directly down, not out in front. Okay, so either directly down or actually more towards your hands, which is going to emphasize your triceps really working. Three, two, one. All right, so next we'll need one dumbbell for a kneeling overhead tricep extension. More tricep work. And for those of you who don't know exactly where the triceps are, right back here, that's when you should be feeling it for the majority of this circuit here. Okay, we're gonna get started in 10 seconds. When you're in that kneeling position, try to lock your hips out so you're not actually sitting back. Okay, let's get ready. In three, two, one. Flex and extend. Get a good squeeze as usual when you're doing these tricep exercises. If you prefer to hold the weight both ends, it's totally up to you. There's no right or wrong way as long as you get that full range of motion, allowing a really good flex here. If you can get the weight to touch your upper back, even better. And then reach up towards the ceiling. Three, two, one. One more set, and then we'll finish off this part with the reverse plank before we get into our push-up finisher. And that's gonna really fatigue and burn out those chest and triceps. Okay, three, two, one. So flex, you know the drill. That's the biggest difference between working the triceps versus shoulders and chest. The triceps, the only joint really, is the elbow joint. Your shoulders shouldn't be doing too much here. When you're doing a shoulder press or a chest press, you have both the shoulder and elbow joint working, so more muscles are engaged, making it easier. Three, two, one. Last exercise here, we're gonna do that reverse plank. So get on your elbows, dig the heels into the ground, and you're just gonna hold that position. It's one of those exercises that doesn't look too bad, but it's a good test of your muscular endurance, but also your mobility and stability. Just be able to get into the position. So for some people, you'll find this really easy. Some of you might find it really tough, depending how good you are at body weight stuff. So you're gonna be on your elbows here. Three, two, one, lift your hips up, and go. And you're just holding that position. So heels are taking into the ground, elbows are directly below the shoulders. You wanna feel the triceps working here, your shoulders, the upper back, and a little bit near the back part of your legs as well. So the glutes, hamstrings, and calves are all doing some work. Keep it going. Three, two, one, and break. One more set here. So even though you're not moving there, you're still feeling the triceps, especially after all the work you've just done with them. Okay, one more set. We'll take a break after this. In three, two, one, reverse plank. Let's go. Shoulders as usual, down the back. Make sure you're not bringing them up towards your ears. Keep the heels down on the ground. Keep your butt up as high as you can. And just breathe and hold that position. So a little bit less for the regular plank, a lot more upper body and even lower body than the regular plank. Three, two, one. All right, so let's take a bit of a longer break here. Rest up those arms. You're gonna need them for the finisher. Because what we have here is a push-up Tabata. For those of you who don't know what a Tabata is, Tabata is just a timing scheme. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, 8 sets. Meaning we're going to do 8 sets of push-ups here. My challenge for you is to count your push-ups. 
So counter push-ups, go relatively hard, but don't go all out. What we like to do for this one is count our lowest round as our overall score. So for instance, if you hit 10 push-ups for your first seven rounds, but then get four push-ups on your eighth round, your score would be four. Whereas if you started at seven, maintain seven the whole time, and then on the eighth round you hit eight, your score would be seven. Okay, so 20 on, 10 off, eight total sets, count your reps, your lowest round is your overall score. So for those of you who follow along here, put your score in the comment box below, keeping in mind that we just worked a lot of triceps, we just worked a lot of shoulders, so you might not be as fresh as you normally are. If you start on your toes, finish on your toes. If you start on your knees, finish on your knees. So unless you're really strong with push-ups, I would say unless you can do 15 to 20 in a row on your toes, you might want to start on your knees. So you just focus on full range of motion. So we'll get started in 30 seconds. So the first set here is just kind of a, a testing out. Like I said, go at a moderate to low fast pace rate and see how many reps you get. Once you set that baseline, every other round you're trying to meet that same number. All right, so we're gonna start in a few seconds. 20 on, 10 off, count your reps. In three, two, one, let's go, push-ups. Once you're done, rest up. Three, two, one. So whatever that score is, remember that score you're gonna to try to hit it every time. I'm trying to hit 15 every time. You'll see what happens if you go too fast, too hard. Ready? Let's go, same thing. Try to hit that number again. Three, two, one. And if you feel like you aim too high, you can bring those reps down. Because once you hit a wall, it's really tough to keep pushing through. Three, two, one, round three. Three, two, one, three down. We got five to go. So if you're hurt, then remember, bring the reps down one or two reps at a time, and then try to maintain. Three, two, one, let's go. So you're gonna really feel those triceps by now. Three, two, one, four down, four to go. Shake up those arms. After this, we're all done. So four more sets. Three, two, one, let's go. Three, two, one. So even I made the fatal mistake of going too fast. Down to 12 reps now. Whatever you're at now, try to sustain it. Three, two, one. Let's go. Almost there, keep pushing. Three, two, one. Two more sets, and then we're all done. You're gonna feel a good pump in your arms, your chest, your shoulders. Three, two, one. Let's go.
Three, two, one. Last set. You guys know what I'm talking about now, about hitting that wall. So if you have to take a break or two, try to keep it going though. Three, two, one. Last one. Let's go. Almost there, let's go right to the end. Three, two, one, and done. So as usual, save the best for last. That's it for today, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for another pole workout.